Blackmagic has released DaVinci Resolve 20.2 and within this new update they have released something called Cinematic Haze. Now this is pretty sick because I use Haze for almost all my production work and Haze is just awesome for adding depth, for adding a little bit of atmosphere and texture to your image but also trying to give your shadows just a bit more of that creamy type of feel which is really really nice and something you see often in Netflix style films and documentaries. Now it's interesting that DaVinci Resolve released this because there is another plugin called Nano which was released a few Few months earlier which also added cinematic haze in a very very cool way so even though I haven't tried that maybe in the future it'd be worth comparing the two to see which one is better now this cinematic haze is only available in the studio version of DaVinci Resolve but it is worth watching this to kind of see what kind of image you're able to create using this and then we can kind of determine if we need to take haze machine ever again into one of our shoots so let's hop into DaVinci Resolve and let's go through this so we're in the color tab of DaVinci Resolve and you can see I've already color graded this clip and I've applied the cinematic haze and you can see it already which I've applied to this node right here you can see a before and an after with the cinematic haze and you can see the kind of effect that it creates and in my opinion it's done a pretty good job um, but it does use depth map which means that your footage and your playback is going to play back not so fast but hey that's a compromise that you got to make if you're creating some really really cool effects sometimes so we're going to try and recreate this type of luck here so i'm just going to get rid of this cinematic haze i'm going to start from this luck right here so i'm going to make a new node by pressing alt or option s and then over in your effects library over here you're going to come in and you're going to type in cinematic haze remember you have to update your davinci resolve to davinci resolve 20.2 to get this and you need the studio version to be able to apply it and use it so we already have applied it and you can see the background actually becomes pretty dark which is not what we kind of want but i'll go and show you how we can increase the brightness etc etc and go through it so right here we have our depth map so like i mentioned it this does use depth map and you can preview your depth map by turning this on and this will kind of showcase to you basically it's like a when you press shift h and it shows your the mask that you've created and what's being selected and what's not being selected and as you can see you can see my face here and you can see i can't remember what this even is it's just some darkness um but it's affecting a lot of the brighter areas and not the dark areas and this is when you use the far limit and the near limit to kind of affect where you want your haze to start affecting your near limit is how close and your far limit is how far basically so if i was to bring it down the near limit i don't want stuff closest to the camera to have haze in which is my face um, in this instance so i can bring this down like this and i can turn off my depth map in a second so you can kind of see and your far limit say you don't want haze in the background like the furthest away you can start bringing this in and this will remove haze from the darkest area well from the furthest areas at the back and yeah so i'm going to turn off my depth map here and you can kind of see as i change this you can see where the haze is starting to be affected. So I'm just going to leave this here and turn on my depth map just to double check. That looks pretty fine. It doesn't matter if it produce, uh, protrudes a little bit over my shoulders here because when you add haze, it does tend to affect the characters a little bit. But it depends on how clean and concise you'd like your haze. So that is that. Gamma is basically like how strong it kind of is, I guess. So I'm just going to leave gamma as it was, and we can come back to this afterwards. Then we have atmospheric scattering. Now this is where you kind of create a lot of the luck within this. You have air light, which will kind of brighten or darken the haze that we have here. And often when we do add haze, it will be quite, not bright, but it kind of lift the shadows in the room a little bit. And that's one of the reasons why you do add haze is because the contrast between the shadows and the highlights kind of just becomes a lot smaller so you don't have to add as much like um have like as much dynamic range and stuff for cameras etc etc but coming back to this you can see we've been able to brighten this haze like this and uh, this is looking pretty nice right here and then we have our density of our haze and it's kind of how thick you want the haze to be you know either have it really light or you can have it really thick and obviously when it's really thick things in the background are going to start like disappearing because uh, they're going to disappear into the haze um, behind us so we can just kind of find a point that we kind of like i don't want to do it overdo it then we have resolution loss so this is basically like things in the background they're going to start losing like this is going to 
get blurred out basically they're going to start losing resolution um which is what you'll be using utilizing this now i'm just going to leave this as it is but the next one that we may want to utilize is actually colorize now colorize will ha help add color to your haze much like in glow when you do colorizing glow yeah add color into your glow this will add color into your haze so maybe i actually wanted to add a little bit of blues into my haze so i can just drag this color wheel this way and you can see as I move this around that we're adding a, any color that we wish into our haze. So maybe I just want to add a little bit of blue like this and this is looking pretty nice and this is looking pretty good. So already we have a before and an after with this particular clip and I think already it's looking pretty good but we can make this even better. Um, as we come down the list right here. So I'll, I'll open these as we come down. So next we have our light halos. So you see we have our most brightest areas within our image right here. And you can kind of add a little bit of a halo within these if you so wish. You can see it almost acts like a glow and you can kind of control the threshold of your halo, which is basically what's gonna be classified as a halo. Uh, it's like a shine threshold and glow again. So we have this here and then you can basically decrease or increase the size of this. So I'm really just looking at this window right here and then you can see that you can adjust the brightness down and up like this. You can increase saturation, decrease saturation. Actually, increasing saturation kind of works pretty nicely. Maybe in this glow, we wanted to add a little bit of warmth actually, or orange. Um, it's coming out of these windows right here. As it adds a little bit of contrast from the blue that we've added. And this is looking pretty nice. And then we can come over to light rays. You can press enable light rays and this will add light rays to our particular image. And if I press shift, my angle, you can see that's not doing anything. Probably because when you shift our shine threshold upwards like this, again, this is gonna be targeting like the brightest areas and then the darkest areas as you bring this downwards like this. Um, so here we can see the light rays are starting to be affected and you can bring the length down or up and you can adjust the angle of your light rays. So maybe you want the light rays to come in through this way here and I'll start bringing my shine threshold down as I only really want it to come through these parts um, within the image here and this big window right here. And then you can kind of soften this up and this will basically add, so this is a before and an after with your light rays. So you can probably even lengthen these out even more. And this is kind of add if you wanted to add that little bit of more um, atmosphere and those light rays that haze often does add, then you can use this basically. And I'm kind of happy with that. You can increase the brightness of it as, as you wish. Actually, I kind of like this. That, this looks very, very realistic as to what haze would look like if I was to apply it within this particular situation. This looks, I'm very happy with this to be honest. And then you can increase saturation or decrease saturation. Uh, let's kind of do this as it is. Air disturbance. This is very cool. So in uh, DaVinci Resolve 20.1, I believe, or 20, in, in glow and in light rays, they added atmosphere, and this is very, very similar to what that is. So air disturbance, so when you when you add haze into a room, like, shh, then if you don't waft it around, you'll get like the smoky effects within the room. So when I turn this on, and I go into my intensity, you can see we get these like almost smoke-like figures um, appearing within the haze and again when you don't waft it around sometimes you want this look a bit more of a smoky look um, you can see it's added it pretty nicely and here you can just kind of adjust the scaling you can minimize the skin so you can see as I bring the intensity down what kind of effects that actually adds so I'm going to bring my scaling upwards and it just depends on your preference. And of course, it depends on the imagery that you're trying to create. Let's say you have a smoking scene or something like this and you want to add a little bit more haze. Um, that's a bit more, uh, has a bit more uh, disturbance and has a little bit more intensity. You can use this like this uh, and it's really, really cool. And you can adjust the detail of it this way, more detailed or less detailed and go from that. And then you have your follow direction, follow speed and I haven't actually even played with this yet but I think it's when you play it's like how much it kind of moves but somebody might I know yeah I was right so as you can see you can kind of see as it plays 
how the light is now being affected. So that's really, really cool. So overall, we have this really, really cool haze effect that we have created. And we have a before and an after. And we haven't gone overboard. I don't think we've gone overboard at all, but you can see the difference that it makes. And if you forgot haze on set and you're like, what should I do now? Now you have this, which is now built into the image resolve. You don't have to pay any other third party plugins, etc., etc. And you never play with this. As of course, the main thing is just like any depth map tool, the playback isn't the best. So if you do have a slow computer, um, <laughs> good luck. But if not, just go in your playback, go into maybe half or quarter, or simply just use proxies and just go from there. It may just take a little bit longer to export, but that is that. So that is Cinematic Haze in a nutshell, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And I hope you learned something new, but yes, it's awesome to see that DaVinci Resolve is utilizing and seeing what's happening within the space and what people are wanting and implementing that into the software pretty quickly. So yeah, thank you.